you might have to accept the recording that you are that you are okay you know that your class is being recorded you can probably you get a notification just say yes all right so let's begin with today the 11th sunday we are doing and the 10th gita lesson and um, let's begin with the prayer where we first the guru pranama so can you see my screen everyone you can put a thumbs up if you can see my screen Yes, yes. ma'am. You can. Right. You can see them. Thank you for that. So you can pray with me. Om Abhyan Simran Dushyatnanan Dhanushala Kya Chakshur Nil Tamye Na Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Pada Ya Krishna Prestha Ya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Ki Namne Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani Nitrishe Shishunya Vad Pascha Te Desha Tarani. This one try to learn it up. Panchi Tattva Maha Mantra. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. And this is the Maha Mantra which is given to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is supposed to be very powerful. I'll tell you more about how powerful these words are in another class. Now I want you to just say this with me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So next, now from this class, whenever you will recite a shloka, I want you to start by saying the Panchatantra Mantra and Hare Krishna and then you will say your shloka, okay? So today's class, children, can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm just still connecting. I think he's having some problems. So today's class, I want to discuss first, I want to know whether you're understanding what is the meaning of renunciation. So, so many classes I keep on using the word renunciation, renunciation so many times, but I don't know whether all of you understand the word renunciation. So can someone tell me what to understand by renunciation? Anybody? What is the meaning of the word renunciation, Niranjan? Arav, Niranjana, Arya, anyone can try? I've heard of it, someone. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, You're not sure, so you don't want to try. Or now, is it like some kind? Ma'am, no, ma'am, I've heard it. Like, I've read it in books, actually. Okay. Uh, ma'am, uh, is it like uh, believing something or something like that? Yes. You're very close to it. It's like having a specific belief which, which you know, keeps you free from the material world. Anybody? Ma'am, believe, yes, yes. believe calmness to claim something like that? To be in calmness. Niranjan, what did you say? To be calm. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes. That's also very close. Good, Niranjan. To be calm. When you're renounced, you are very calm. That's true. Arya says it means that you have um, you have a belief in something, yes. right? Arya, you have yes. you said that it's a, yes. it's a kind of a belief that you have. Very good. Arya, what do you understand by renunciation, Arya? Ma'am, it is is it a formal rejection? Rejection could be, yeah. It is also being very calm. It also means it's sort of dejection is a little negative word, Niranjan. Dejection is also something like sadness, but there is no sadness in renunciation. Ma'am, so is it like a positive minded yes. belief? It is a positive belief. Yes, it's a po it's created this renunciation is created by a very positive belief. Yes. That's true. It's not it's not negative at all. The dejection is similar, Niranjan. But it is not exactly dejection because dejection is slightly negative, like, you know, giving up dejection. So, not like that. Arav doesn't want to try today. Arav? No, no, I think it would mean like, um, I have a. Ma'am, like, um, I'm believing in something or something. Same, you're thinking that it is similar to what uh, Arya is saying, you no? Know? Like, it is believing in something. All right, so you all are all getting around this, the point, but the exact point is not coming. I didn't hear Niranjana. Niranjana was in the class. Ma'am, uh, I thought that uh, it is like an uh, uh, Arya said. You, 
also believe that there is something it requires some sort of a belief the nun or uh, i think it's an attachment to the god or something yes it's a belief it's an attachment to god wow you all are all very very close and it's in fact very true very good attachment or closeness to god is renunciation very very good meaning all right so let's yeah yes you anjan sacrifice Yes, it also involves sacrifice, but you know, sacrifice and rejection and these words are true, but with no negative thing. So you don't have to, you know, struggle and sacrifice something. So nothing really negative about it. Okay, it's a beautiful, blissful, happy state. Okay, so let's look at some of the meanings given by some great scholars. So in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is a very great uh, scriptural uh, analysis book. written by rupa goswami he has said that anything which is dovetail dovetail means which has you know along with it krishna consciousness that is real renouncement or renunciation okay and renunciation is not is actually sanya or giving up it is giving up but it is not giving up this world so people think that sanyas you go to the forest and that is renunciation so you remember last class in gita krishna says that giving up the world and going to the forest and stopping all activities is not renunciation because no one can give up activity unless you become a self realized soul and then you have no more duty that also krishna says in the third chapter so renunciation is not sacrificing everything giving up everything no it simply means complete dependence on god so here is where we are close to what arya said we are close to what niranjana said so it is a complete belief and faith where you are dependent on god so in this man yes tell me ma'am i have sent you something personally okay let me see that yes the chat box arya please uh, um, let your sister also join i'll be very happy The more the merrier for me. It is tiagam, yeah, very good. It's all sort of sacrifice, tiagam, renunciation, all this. Remember last class I had told you that all these things don't require determination. Oh, I don't have no attachment. It requires superior or higher taste. And when you start chanting, when you start just thinking of Gita, when you start giving importance to your soul, you will start enjoying that joy of. being you know of being in krishna consciousness and then automatically you know you don't have to have pain and oh i have to sacrifice have to do tyaga i don't want i see my own bond beautiful nice things of this world nothing like that the moment you attach yourself you understand gita and you attach yourself to krishna or that is the supreme personality of god you attach yourself to the divine purpose of this world in complete dependent then you are renowned then that is a beautiful word called renunciation many people feel it is you know it's a bad the word which requires a lot of pain sacrifice hard work will power nothing like that you just have to be completely dependent on god that is the shrimad bhagavatam One point, uh, Canto One, Chapter Eighteen, Shloka Twenty Two. In the purport, Prabhupada explains that real renunciation is so simple. Dependence on God. That is what even Niranjana has said. Belief, attachment, closeness to God. It is requiring sacrifice. You know, you have to give up all the material attachment, but it doesn't require it with pain. It simply requires higher attachment, attachment to the higher faith. Okay. and one more beautiful thing happens when you reach renunciation you become a paramahamsa and of course i have reached there it's a very high state of bhakti and when you reach there you do not feel envious of anyone otherwise you know you see your friend he has a better mobile than you he has a better you know laptop than you or you see oh they have gone to a holiday to so many beautiful places around the world why am i not going like you know you look around you feel envious those who are atheists you know who don't want to believe in god they are actually envious of god also they don't even believe god they don't want to imagine that there is a supreme power who is controlling everything and just give up to him they can't do that why because they have so much of envy in their heart and envy is a lower energy emotion okay 
Yeah, I hope I'm, I'm getting to help you to understand the word renunciation. So actually my mother who attends the class, she was telling me that you use renunciation, do you even know if all your children know the meaning? So I thought I must clarify this meaning. So renunciation is also a state of non-enviousness. You're able to see Krishna in everyone and everything. You know, so you're able to love everyone. You're able to just give up your whole body and mind and your, your, the results of your duties to God. You know, in the service of God. So renunciation means, and now in this fourth paragraph, renunciation means renouncing one's dependence. Dependence means, you know, that you think that, oh, I have to have lunch, I have to have this job, I have to get a high salary, and all these dependence on conditions of material nature. It's only possible in high bhakti, so don't try it now. And then you become completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord. You will see miracles happening. You will see how God will, as much as you reach out to God, God will reach out to you. And real independence from all these material worlds and the pains and miseries of the material world is complete faith in the mercy of the Lord with no dependence on anything material. So let's come to the last paragraph. I want someone to read the last paragraph for me. Who will read the last paragraph? Arya. Yeah, Arya, please read it for me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, real renunciation means that one should always think himself part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and therefore think that he has no right to enjoy the results of his work. Since he is a part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, the, result, the results of his work must be enjoyed by the Supreme Lord. So, Arya, as you have read this, you can see that some people who would read this, they would say, oh, God has to enjoy everything. I should not enjoy. And so you think that you are going to have a very difficult time. Oh, everything is God. Nothing is mine. All the joy is actually God. And some people are not able to take it. You know, not able to feel the joy of really experiencing that emotion. The moment you give yourself in the, in the hands of God, you actually experience a much bigger joy than the small, oh, this mobile is mine, or this body is mine. See, my hands are so pretty. See, my nails. All these joys related to the material, the body, and the, you know, things, they will disappear and you will actually enjoy a joy which is far superior than all these temporary joys which always end. They are always temporary. They will always end. They are not permanent. The moment you understand, I am not this body, I am not even this mind, I am not even my intelligence. These are all gross and um, subtle parts of, you know, of my soul is just attached to these things now. I am actually the soul. The soul is covered by all these things. So we learn a lot more now. So I hope if you haven't understood renunciation clearly, I'll share this slide and you can just contemplate, you know, or think about what really renunciation. Yes, it is tyaga. Yes, it is rejection. Yes, it is a state of calmness. It is belief. It is attachment, closeness to God. What exactly is renunciation? Being non-envious, being dependent on Krishna. Okay, and we are all, by reading the Gita, we are trying to understand how to reach that Paramahamsa state of pure bhakti, where we are happy in any circumstance. Okay? So that is renunciation. Now let, let me ask you one more question today. What is the meaning of the word transcendental? I have always been using this word with transcendental. Can you tell me what you understand by transcendental? I'm going to like use it in a sentence. Okay. So transcendental, I would say that um, when you are, you know, giving your food to Krishna and you're making it a prasadam, it becomes transcendental. Or if I tell you that every verse in the Bhagavad Gita is transcendental, it is not material, it is transcendental. Or if I will tell you that the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the word Krishna, is not just a normal word, it is transcendental. It has, you know, very high powers, it's transcendental, it's not material. So I think now you should be able to guess what is the meaning of transcendental. Um, um, it's not it's not like materialistic right yes. it's not materialistic so 
Ma'am, so, so that which is not material or materialistic is transcendental. Yes, that is one of the definition. More you can explain. Um, let me think. I just think of the sentence again. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. I can't just make out who is user. Um, Ara, can you try what is transcendental? Niranjan, Niranjana, what is transcendental? Mama, I think transcendental is related to God. Okay. It's not material, it's not materialistic, so it is related to God. Yes. Mama, everything that uh, belongs to Krishna. Krishna, everything that belongs to Krishna. Okay, yes. Maybe like and, uh, and everything that is connected. Everything. No, no, next. Hmm. And maybe something like so. When we said it's not materialistic, so maybe something like that's um out of the box. Maybe like something like uh, mystical, something like that. Yes, mystical. Good word. It could be anything that is mystical, not belonging to this world, which we cannot perceive by our senses. And people think that only what they can see and feel by their senses exists. They fail to understand that there is a whole world, which is, you know, uh, not materialistic, which we uh, can't feel and, and see and hear and touch with our senses. So anything that is superior. Yes, very good, Arya, you have tried well. Arav has also yes. explained well. Yes, Niranjan, what is transcendental? Can, can you say a thing that is unknown to the world? Anything that is unknown now? Yes, could be. But you know, when you start get, getting realization, you will start understanding. You will know. Once you start becoming spiritual, you will start knowing and feeling and experiencing. You cannot see it really. You have to experience it. It comes through a lot of meditation, thinking. It doesn't come through. Rishika has joined me. Um, is it something like that's like also mythical or anything? Medical. No, mythical. Mythical. Kind of. Actually, myth, you know, myth has a wrong, has a meaning which says not true. So, um, and in fact, I personally, I do not like when they say Ramayana and Mahabharata are myths because it gives an idea that these are imaginary and they're not true. And I, you know, want children who study the Gita to really understand that these are true. They are real. They exist. They are, in fact, what is truly real. So if you use the word myth, in, you know, when you say that myth, um, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Gita is in Mahabharata, they're actually part of a myth. Yes, materialistically, people talk about it like that. They do mention it like that. But actually, it is very, very real. It has a lot of eternal truth, which materialistic people will not be able to understand. It has to be. I'm sure it can be. Yeah. It can be an eternal realm or something like that. Yes. Eternal realm. Yes. Very good. I love the way you're exploring the place. Um, can I... Eternal realm, being in an eternal realm. Yes, Niranjana. Uh, I think that uh, as to God, people uh, and experience this type of uh, transcendental. Experiencing God is transcendental. That's what you said. But there was some disturbance. I could not hear clearly. Uh, I think it's in uh, from the fan. Okay. Ritika, you want to try? Hare Krishna, Ritika. You want to try? Yes, ma'am. What is the meaning of transcendental? You want to try and explain? Okay, ma'am. Uh, and ma'am, uh, have they recited their shlokas? No, no. We haven't come to the shloka recitation now. I first discuss what is the meaning of renunciation. I will share the slide and if you have a doubt, you can ask over there. Um, now we are discussing what is the meaning of transcendental. So I only discussed in detail what is renunciation and now I'm discussing what is transcendental. So the conversation will be after this. Yes, Niranjan? Ma'am, can you say supernatural? Yes, you can say supernatural, that which is not natural. Very good. Transcendental is something which is supernatural also, which is not material. Yeah. Related to this I'm spiritual. 
Spiritual, very good. Who said that? I'm Arya. Arya, yes, perfect. And spirituality leads to uh, identifying non-physical self. Yes, clarity will lead you to identify your non-physical self. Wow, that's a nice sentence. So, true. Mom, uh, the engine had sent a message. He can't join. Okay, I'll check the message. The engine has sent. Um, no, the engine. I can't see your message. I can see only uh, in WhatsApp. In WhatsApp. So oh, in WhatsApp. Okay, fine. And one uh, Anushka Mitra, uh, a person called uh, this, have messaged. Uh, I am Anushka Mitra. I want to join your Gita class from today. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Anushka Mitra, please just uh, send her the link. Um, can somebody send her the link and ask her to join? Mama, I, I, I have sent. You have sent. Mama, I have sent. Mama, she is my sister. Yeah. All right. So please ask her to join. And uh, Niranjan, I have already. I love Niranjan. Um, thing. Mama, Mama, it is not me. Mama, it is uh, Niranjan Singh. Yeah, it's Niranjan Singh. Yeah, but I can't see them trying to enter. I can't see them in the waiting room. Okay, I don't know why. Yeah, but he has sent the photo. Yeah. Maybe I he, he can try again. Ma'am, no, ma'am. If you go to the participants, you can see uh, how many is going, how many, the ones uh, trying to join. Okay. So it's the participants. Uh, I can't see anybody trying to join now. Yeah, Anushka Mishra is joining now. Okay, Nidhan. Um, can we say transcendental also means like preternatural, which is basically like that's like beyond the like wonders like that? Yes, we can say that. So welcome um, to Niranjan Singh, Hare Krishna, and Anushka Mishra, welcome to the Gita class. It's the 10th Gita class, but I'm sure Arav will help you to catch up. Um, okay, ma'am. Yeah, welcome dear Anushka. So good to have you also with us today. So actually today I'm just clarifying some terms to start the class. I'm trying to discuss what is transcendental because transcendental is the word we use a lot when we talk about spirituality. Ritika, your hand okay, is raised. Would you like to say something? Ritika? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, yesterday I read an uh, editorial uh, basically on a news um, website, internet, that uh, it was related to consciousness and spirituality. Uh, it said that uh, spiritual or spirituality does not refer to any particular religion or religious rituals. It simply refers to one's rational belief in one's own identity as a metaphysical self, which is basically different in nature from the body, including the brain, and from matter in all its forms. Perfect. So that is actually the first step to spirituality. Very good, Ritika. It's good that you you know try to read and, and listen more to people who are learned in this matter. Very good. So yes, it is the, the beginning of spirituality is to understand that you are not this body, but you are you related to something metaphysical, which is what is spiritual, which is transcendental. So being able to experience yourself as not this body is the first step. It's itself not very easy, you know. Not at all easy to be identifying yourself with the higher self and not with your body, material body. Yes, that is very close, but eventually there is a higher and higher goal where you become the bhakti. That is what becomes the higher state of spirituality. So identifying yourself with your soul, then experiencing the the param the you know paramatma or the super soul, and then the higher state is being able to see the paramatma as a person in Krishna or you know as a personality. You're able to have love and affection, and you're able to communicate with that spiritual supreme personality of Godhead, you're, and you're able to. You know, have bhakti or brain that will become the highest realm of spirituality where you're experiencing this. Many people are a little below that, where they are simply imagining that the whole world is energy, 
they are only seeing the light which comes from Krishna's body and they are attracted to that light and they feel wow this is everything. They don't go closer and closer and see Krishna and they are not able to love that supreme personality of Godhead which becomes the highest form of spirituality. So what is transcendental? Let me share some of the uh, you know, uh, quotations which I have found. Basically, transcendental comes from the verb. It's the verb transcend. And transcendental becomes the adjective. So transcend means to rise above. Anything you know, which, which is above this material, which is considered to be you know, base, above that, not perceived by our senses, that is spiritual. Many of you gave that definition, spiritual, supernatural, right? All those words you gave me, very good. those were all closed, non-material. Belonging to divine nature, different from the nature of this material world, not affected by this material world. See, I'm just reading all that one by one, which I found from different scriptures, which um, you know, great their life people have shared. It means that transcendental is something not affected by this material nature, it is eternal. For example, if I say transcendental food, and once you're eating something, you offer it to Krishna, it becomes transcendental. You cannot see how it has become transcendental. Just that emotion carries energy where you feel that I have offered this to God and I'm taking it. Then the food is transcendent. The work you do, any work you do, you just make it pure. No attachments, no desires, and you know, no sense of possessiveness. It becomes transcendental. The work becomes transcendental. Okay? So when you do something in the spirit where you are offering it, it becomes pure. So transcendental is also pure, it is divine, it is spiritual. And you don't get any more karma palas, you don't get bound. It's something which frees you, which liberates you. Otherwise, any work you do with a desire, immediately it will give you a positive karma phala or a negative karma phala. If it's positive, you have to get some positive results. If it's negative, you will get something, you know, like a like a karma. The karma will give you something in return, positive or negative. But it is all both binding. Whether it's positive or negative, it is binding you into this material world. Spiritual is when you're free from that. You know, you are offering it to Krishna, you're free from the results. Not binding anymore. Transcendental sound vibration is the spiritual sound, like the holy names of Krishna. If you say Vishnu, Narayana, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, or just Om, or even you know the different sounds of like Om Namah Shivaya, or the Mrityunjaya Mantra, or the Gayatri Mantra, so many the, the great realized souls have found out these sounds, you know, the combination. So this is also called Mantra. Mantra is also a way of reaching Krishna, God. Okay? Now, if you think of Shiva, he was one person who had made himself into nothing. He's pure consciousness. So when you think of Shiva, he will help you to approach that state of being in Krishna consciousness very easily. That state of mind is Krishna consciousness. Or even if you just talk about the stories of Krishna, pastimes and leelas of Krishna, or any avatara of Krishna, there are so many. Everything connected to Krishna ultimately becomes transcendental or spiritual. So that is the highest stage of bhakti, which comes with a lot of practice, understanding, meditation, contemplation, questioning. Children, I want to tell you all today, don't accept everything that, oh, my Gita teacher said this, Pravina said, so this is how it is. Don't have to accept everything. I might tell you that, okay, so King Janaka, he did not look at Sita after she got married, and that is a great thing. You can question me. You can say, how is that man? The father should be concerned for his daughter. You can, you can question it, you know. Everything you can question. You need, to question. you need to question. Only then you will get more and more understanding and clarity. Right? Yes, Nathan, you want to ask something? Noise is coming from somebody now. Ma'am? Yeah. Is Dwaraka tra a transcendental? Yes, all these holy places are dhams. Vrindavan, Dwaraka, they are all transcendental. 
but only those who understand even a little bit of it can feel that you know otherwise they will only see the material thing oh this dirt this kachra here or or oh this is such a busy and noisy place i don't like it if you are material you will not be able to see what is transcendental because that is above material right so yes niranjan those places where holy people are you know uh, reaching their self their realized state they have some energy there those are transcendental they are spiritual right yes correct so let's Ma'am. yeah Yes, and if and Bhagavad Gita transcendental. Yes, definitely. Niranjan so, Bhagavad Gita is absolutely transcendental. Everything about the Gita and anything about Krishna or Sri Mad Bhagavatam or Krishna stories or Krishna's names, they are all transcendental. Rutika, your hand is raised. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, ma'am. Ah, uh, like many people ah uh, visit too many tap. Temples, by Tir, Tiyatra, and all that. So, is it a waste of time and resources? No, not so, Ritika. It's not so. Um, it is true that you can sit in your wherever you are, and you can just be in spirituality. You don't have to go to spiritual places to experience it. But once you know you are in love with Krishna or in love with that uh, spiritual form or avatar of Krishna, you want to see Ayodhya. You spend your time and money to go there. Your all the time, your mind is thinking about Rama, Rama, Rama. You're looking at things which are related to Rama. Your mind, your body, what you're eating from those temples, prasad. That is, you know, with so much of gains a lot of power and becomes transcendental. And you reach a higher level more easily when you put in your efforts and your time and your money in the service of God. That's why we say giving money. To the temple service, or giving money to people who are devotees, and you know, they are, that's all actually very, very transcendental, and it is not a waste of time unless you are neglecting your duties, right? So your duty always comes first because we are not spiritual, you know, realized soul. When we become realized souls, we will have no duty. Remember, in chapter three, Krishna said. Once you are totally realized, you don't have any duty. You can whatever you do is already offered to Krishna. Your whole body and mind and soul you have already offered. But we are not like that. We have desires, the past, birth, you know, which are there, which we do not identify, and we we are thinking of results. You know, though we say oh, we should not think of results, we do think of. I have come now here to Chennai. I have given an interview. I'm thinking, oh, will I get selected? So you know, although I'm talking about Gita, I'm still still only a practitioner. I'm not yet realized. I'm just teaching you because I know that when we speak the Gita, we are getting closer to being realized. Yes, Niranjan, your hand is raised. Ma'am, is the Guru Ayur, the temple Guru Ayur, also become a transcendental? Of course, very very much. the the deity of krishna which people pray and they actually visualize see krishna in the deity the whole place the whole prasadam everything about gurvayur is completely transcendental again i want to tell you niranjan that if there is somebody who who has no you know who is very envious in heart and cannot accept krishna and cannot accept god and uh, you know is very much in the material world he cannot feel that For him, it is not transcendental. Only the person who becomes a bhakta, or who has learned to surrender himself to Krishna, can feel that you know the beauty or spirituality of places like Guru Vayur or Vishnu Devi or uh, Kailash, or all these beautiful places where your mind is not anymore in the material world. You are. In a spiritual realm, I think one of you also told me the meaning uh, for transcendental. I'm me Arya. Yes, Arya. Yes, exactly. So being in that spiritual realm, you know, is transcendental. When you go to these holy places, you automatically those who are bhaktas, you know, their mind is in the spiritual realm. They are not even bothered about the material world, and it helps them to become more and more spiritual. Now. Let's come to one more. Point. Actually, the class is going to, uh, to uh, the Zoom meeting is going to end. I would want you all to join once more, and uh, I think we'll take the next question from the next Zoom meeting. Shall we do that? And I also want you all to recite your shloka. Some of you have learned some new shloka. 
So uh, shall I stop the meeting and you all can come back? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All of you, please come back. Okay, ma'am.